Good evening. I was asked um, to read a story for story time. Um, I decided to pick my favorite children's book, which is The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. So, as the old saying goes, are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. There once was a Velveteen Rabbit, and in the beginning he was really splendid. He was fat and bunchy, as a rabbit should be. His coat was spotted brown and white. He had real thread whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink sateen. On Christmas morning, when he sat wedged in the top of the boy's stocking, with a sprig of holly between his paws, the effect was charming. There were other things in the stocking, nuts and oranges, a toy engine, and chocolate almonds, and a clockwork mouse, but the rabbit was quite the best of all. For at least two hours, the boy loved him, and then aunts and uncles came to dinner, and there was a great rustling of tissue paper and unwrapping of parcels, and in the excitement of looking at all his new presents, the Velveteen Rabbit was forgotten. For a long time, he lived in the toy cupboard or on the nursery floor, and no one thought very much about him. He was naturally shy, and being only made of velveteen, some of the more expensive toys quite snubbed him. The mechanical toys were very superior and looked down upon everyone else. They were full of modern ideas and pretended they were real. The model boat, who had lived through two seasons and lost most of his paint, caught the tone from them and never missed an opportunity of referring to his rigging in technical terms. The rabbit could not claim to be a model of anything, for he didn't know that real rabbits existed. He thought they were all stuffed with sawdust like himself, and he understood that sawdust was quite out of date and should never be mentioned in modern circles. Even Timothy, the jointed wooden lion, who was made by the disabled soldiers and should have had broader views, put on airs and pretended he was connected with government. Between all the poor, little rabbit was made to feel himself insignificant and commonplace, and the only person who was kind to him at all was the skin horse. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his brown coat had bald patches and showed the seams underneath. Most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled to, to string bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger, and by and by break their mainsprings and pass away. And he knew they were only toys and would never turn into anything else. For nursery magic is very strange and wonderful, and only those playthings that are old and wise and experienced, like the skin horse, understand all about it. What is real? asked the rabbit one day, when they were lying side by side near the nursery door, before Nana came to tidy. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you? Real isn't how you were made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time not just play with, but really loves you. Then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once like being wound up? he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, your eyes drop out, you get loose in the joints and very shabby, but these things don't matter at all. Because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except the people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, said the rabbit, and then wished he had not said it, for he thought the skin horse might be sensitive. But the skin horse only smiled. The boy's uncle made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago. But once you are real, you cannot become unreal again. It lasts for always. The rabbit sighed. He thought it would be a long time before this magic reel happened. He longed to become real, to know what it felt like. And yet the idea of growing shabby and losing his eyes and whiskers was rather sad. He wished he could become real without those uncomfortable things happening to him. There was a person called Nana who ruled the nursery. Sometimes she took no notice of playthings, but sometime for whatever reason, she went swooping around, hustling away all the cupboards. She called this tidying up. And the playthings all hated it, especially the tin ones. The rabbit didn't mind, 
for wherever he was thrown, he came down soft. One evening, when the boy was going to bed, he couldn't find the china dog that always slept with him. Nana was in a hurry and in too much trouble to hunt for dogs at bedtime, so she simply looked about her, and seeing the toy cupboard door was open, she made a swoop. Here, she said, take your old bunny. He'll do to sleep with you. And she dragged the rabbit out by the ear and put him in the boy's arms. That night, and for many nights after, the Velveteen Rabbit slept in the boy's bed. At first, he found it rather uncomfortable, for the boy hugged him very tight, and sometimes he rolled over on him. Sometimes he pushed him so far under the pillow the rabbit could scarcely breathe. And he missed, too, those long hours in the nursery when all the house was quiet and his talks with the skin horse would happen. But very soon he grew to like it, for the boy would talk to him and make nice tunnels for him under the bedclothes. And he said were like the burrows that real rabbits lived in, and they had splendid games. When Nana had gone away to supper and left the nightlight on, and the boy would then drop off to sleep. The rabbit would snuggle down close under his warm little chin and dream, with the boy's hands clasped close around him all night long. And so time went on, and the little rabbit was so happy, so happy that he never noticed how his beautiful velveteen fur was getting shabbier and shabbier. His tail began to get unsewn, and all the pink rubbed off his nose from where the little boy had kissed him. Spring came, and they had long days in the garden. For wherever the boy went, the rabbit went too. He had rides in the wheelbarrow and picnics on the grass, and lovely fairy huts were built for him under the raspberry bush. And once, when the boy was called away suddenly to go to tea, the rabbit was left out on the lawn until long after dusk, and then Nanda had to come look for him with a candle, because the boy couldn't sleep unless he was there. He was wet through with dew, and quite earthy from being in the burrows the boy had dug for him. Nana grumbled as she rubbed him off with an apron. You must have your old bunny, she said. Fancy all that fuss for a toy. The boy sat up in bed and stretched out his hands. Give me my bunny, he said. You mustn't say that. He isn't a toy. He's real. And when the little rabbit heard that, he was happy. For he knew what the skin horse had said was true at last. The nursery magic had happened to him. And he was a toy no longer. He was real. The boy himself had said it. That night, he was almost too happy to sleep, and so much love stirred in his little sawdust heart that it almost burst. And into his button eyes, that had long ago lost their polish, there came a look of wisdom and beauty, so that even Nana noticed it the next morning. She picked him up and said, I declare if that old bunny hasn't got quite a knowing expression. It was a wonderful summer. Near the house where they lived, there was a wood, and in long June evenings, the boy liked to go and play there after tea. He took the Velveteen Rabbit with him, and before he wandered off to pick flowers or play among the trees, he always made the rabbit a little nest somewhere along the bracken, where he would be cozy, for he was a kind-hearted little boy and liked the bunny to be comfortable. One evening, while the rabbit was lying there alone, watching the ants run to and fro, he saw two strange creatures creep up. They were rabbits but quite furry and brand new. They must have been very well made, for their seams did not show at all, and they changed shape when they moved. One moment they were long and thin, the next fat and bunchy, instead of staying the same like he always did. Their feet padded softly on the ground, and they crept quite close to him, twitching their noses, while the rabbit stared hard to see where the clockwork stuck out, for he knew the people who jumped generally had something to wind them, but he couldn't see it. They were a new kind of rabbit altogether. They stared at him, and the little rabbit stared back, and all the time their noses twitched. Why don't you get up and play with us? One of them asked. I don't feel like it, said the rabbit, for he didn't want to explain that he had no clockwork. Ha, huh, said the furry rabbit. It's as easy as anything, and gave a big hop sideways. I don't believe you can, he said. I can, said the little rabbit. I can jump higher than anything. He meant, of course, when the boy threw him, but they didn't know that. Can you hop on your hind legs? Asked the furry rabbit. That was a dreadful question, for the velveteen rabbit had no hind legs at all. The back of him was made in one piece, like a pincushion. He sat in the bracket and hoped they would not notice. I don't want to, he said, 
but the wild rabbits had very sharp eyes. And one stretched out their neck and looked. He hasn't got any legs, they called out. Fancy a rabbit without legs. And they began to laugh. I have, cried the little rabbit. I've got hind legs. I'm just sitting on them. Then stretch out and show me like this, said the rabbit. And he began to whirl and dance. So the little rabbit got quite dizzy watching him. I don't like dancing. I'd rather sit still. But all the while he was longing to dance for a funny new tickling feeling ran through him. And he would have felt he would have given anything in the world to dance and jump like these rabbits did. The strange rabbit stopped dancing and came quite close. He came so close this time that his whiskers brushed the velveteen rabbit its ear and then wrinkled his nose suddenly. He doesn't smell right. He's no rabbit at all. He's not real. I am real, said the little rabbit. I am real. The boy told me so. And he began to cry. Just then, the sound of footsteps happened, and the boy ran past near them. And with a stamp of feet and a flash of white, the two strange rabbits disappeared. Come and play with me, called the little rabbit. Oh, do come back. I am real. But there was no answer. Only the little ants marching to and fro, and the leaves swayed gently. The rabbit was all alone. Oh, dear, he thought. Why did they run away like that? Why couldn't they stop and talk to me? For a long time, he lay very still, watching the leaves, hoping they would come back, but they never returned. And the sun sank lower, moths fluttered, and the boy came and carried him home. Weeks passed, and the little rabbit grew very shabby, but the boy loved him just as much. He loved him so hard that all of his whiskers fell off and the pink lining to his ears turned gray and his spots faded. He began to look his shape, and he scarcely looked like a rabbit at all, except to the boy. To him, he was always beautiful. And that was all the little rabbit really cared about. He didn't mind how he looked to other people, because nursery magic had made him real. And when you are real, shabbiness doesn't matter. But one day, the boy grew ill. His face was very flushed, and he talked in his sleep. His little body was so hot that it burned the rabbit when he held him close. Strange people came and went in the nursery, and a light burned all night. And through it all, the velveteen rabbit lay there, hidden from sight, under the sheets, and never stirred. For he was afraid that if they found him, someone might take him away, and he knew that his boy needed him. It was a long, weary time, for the boy was too ill to play. And the little rabbit found it rather dull with nothing to do all day. But he snuggled down patiently and looked forward to the time when they would be well again and they could go out into the garden amongst the flowers and butterflies and stay by the raspberry bush as they used to. All sorts of delightful things he planned and while the boy lay half asleep, he crept up close to the pillow and whispered them in his ear. And presently, the fever turned. The boy got better. He was able to sit up in bed and look at picture books with the little rabbit cuddled close by his side. And one day, they let him get out of bed. It was a bright, sunny morning, and the window stood wide open. They had carried the boy out into the balcony, and the little rabbit lay tangled up among the sheets, thinking. The boy was going to go to the ocean tomorrow. Everything was arranged, and now it only remained to carry out the doctor's orders. They talked about it all, while the little rabbit lay there, with just his head peeping out and listened. The room was to be disinfected, and all the books and toys the boy would play with must be burnt. Hurrah, thought the little rabbit, tomorrow we go to the ocean, for the boy had talked about the ocean, and he wanted very much to see the big waves coming in and the tiny crabs in the sandcastles. Just then, Nana caught sight of him. How about this old bunny, she asked. That, said the doctor, why it's a mass of scarlet fever germs. Burn it at once. Get him a new one. He mustn't have that any more. And so the little rabbit was put into a sack with old picture books and rubbish and carried out to the end of the garden behind the house. That was a fine place to make a bonfire, only the gardener was too busy. He had the potatoes to dig and the green peas to gather. The next morning, he promised to come and burn the lot. That night, the boy slept in a different room, and he had a new bunny. It was splendid, all white, with real glass eyes. The boy was too excited to care, for tomorrow he was going to the ocean, and that in itself was such a wonderful thing, he could think of nothing else. 
While the boy was asleep, dreaming of adventures to come, the little rabbit lay among the old picture books, and he felt so lonely. The sack had been left untied, and so by wriggling, he was able to get his head through the opening and look out. He was shivering, for he had always been used to sleeping in a proper bed, and by this time, his coat was so worn, it was so cold. Nearby, he could see the raspberry bushes growing tall, like the tropical jungle he and the boy had pretended them to be. He thought of those long sunlit hours in the garden, how happy they all were, and sadness came over him. He, see, he seemed to see them all pass before him, each more beautiful than the other. The fairy huts, the quiet evenings, the ants running through his paws, and the wonderful day when he knew he was real. He thought of his old friend, the skin horse, so wise and gentle, and all that he had told him. Of what use was it to be loved and lose one's beauty if it all ended like this? And he shed a tear, a real tear, trickled down his little shabby velvet nose and fell to the ground. And then a wondrous thing happened. For where the tear had fallen, a flower grew out of the ground, a mysterious flower, not at all like any he had seen in the garden. It had slender green leaves the color of emeralds, and in the center was a blossom like a golden cup. It was so beautiful that the little rabbit forgot to cry and just lay there watching it. The blossom opened and there stepped a fairy. She was quite the loveliest fairy in the whole world. Her dress was made of pearl and dewdrops and there were flowers around her neck and in her hair. Her face was like the most perfect flower of all. She came close to the little rabbit and gathered him in her arms and kissed him on the nose for it was damp from crying. Little rabbit, she said, don't you know who I am? The rabbit looked at her and seemed to think that he had seen her before, but could not think of where. I am the magic nursery fairy, she said. I take care of all playthings that children have loved. When they are old and worn out and the children don't need them anymore, I come to take them away and turn them real. Wasn't I real before? asked the rabbit. You were real to the boy, the fairy said because he loved you, but now you should be real to everyone. She held the rabbit close and flew him into the woods. The moon had risen, all the forest was beautiful, and the leaves looked like silver. In the open glade between the tree trunk trunks, the wild rabbits danced with their shadows on the velvet grass, but when they saw the fairy, they stopped and stood in a ring to stare at her. I've brought you a new playfellow, the fairy said, you must be very kind to him. Teach him all he needs to know in rabbit land, for he is going to live with you forever and ever. And she kissed the little rabbit again and put him on the grass. Now run and play, she said. But the little rabbit sat quite still and never moved. For when he saw all the wild rabbits dancing around him, he suddenly remembered his hind legs and he didn't want them to see him all in one piece. He did not know that when the fairy had kissed him this last time, she had changed him forever. And he might have sat there for a long time, had it not been that something tickled his nose. And before he thought of what he was doing, he scratched it. He found that he had real legs. Instead of the dingy velveteen, he had beautiful brown fur, soft and shiny. His ears twitched by themselves, and his whiskers were so long they brushed the grass. He gave one large leap of joy using those hind legs and he went springing about the turf, jumping sideways and whirling around. He grew so excited that when he did look and stop, the fairy had gone. He was a real rabbit at last, and at home with all the other rabbits. Autumn passed into winter and then into spring. When the gr days grew warm and sunny, the boy got to go out to play again in the woods. And while he was playing, two rabbits crept out of the leaves and peeped at him. One of them was small, and brown, but the other had markings under his fur as though long ago he had been spotted. But the spots sh still showed through, and his little soft nose and black eyes were so familiar that the boy thought to himself, why he looks just like my old bunny that I lost when I was sick. But he never knew that it really was his own bunny come back to look at the child who had made him real. The end. I hope you liked this. Um, you obviously don't have to listen to it if it's not for you. 
but a promise is a promise and a friend asked me to do this. So I hope you like the Velveteen Rabbit. It was one of my absolute favorites as a little girl. I still have a Velveteen Rabbit from when I was little. Um, if you like this, um, I can always try and find some more stories to read. I was also doing this as a test on the mic to see if I can get my mom to film baking bread. So I can never figure out what the camera is. I keep looking in the wrong spot. But anyway, have a nice night, everybody. Um, I love you. Stay safe out there and stay at home. Good night.